onboard ships, it is very important to check the performance of the main engine on a regular basis, so as to ensure that it is in optimal working condition. In addition, the results of the performance test can also be used for troubleshooting. Back in the day, diesel engine performance was measured using this mechanical indicator tool. Using this tool and the planimeter, it is possible to calculate the engine's power output. As technology has advanced significantly over the years, automatic monitoring systems are now being used, which made measurements easier, faster, and more accurate. In this episode, we will show you how ships measure the main engine's performance. Main engine performance measurements are only taken while the ship is transiting an area in good weather and calm seas. This is usually done at least once a month. Proper coordination with the bridge is necessary for this and also to ensure that the ship will not make any turns or course alterations while measurement is in progress. Once the bridge officers are informed, the first thing to do is to set the engine speed to 85% of the MCR, or maximum continuous rating. For this engine, 85% MCR is at 81 revolutions per minute. For the full report, it is also necessary to take the readings for the fuel oil and cylinder lube oil flow meters, as well as measuring the rate of lube oil leakage in the piston rod stuffing box. But we'll tackle that in a future episode. This is the modern version of the indicator tool that we have seen earlier. Instead of mechanical springs, stylus, and magnetic paper, this device utilizes a transducer, calibration box, and a computer. The principle is still the same though. The transducer will still be mounted to the indicator valve, same as its predecessor. The indicator valve taps into the inside of the cylinder, so any pressure generated within the cylinder, whether from compression or combustion, can be measured from this point. The next step is to connect the PMI calibration box to the junction box. This is also where the crankshaft angle encoder and the converter for the PMI computer is connected. Once the transducer is connected to the calibration box, we are now ready to take measurements for each cylinder. The 
before mounting the transducer, we need to open the indicator cock a little bit to purge the line. We can then proceed with the measurement. It usually takes a few seconds for the calibration box to finalize the results and send it to the computer. Once measurement for a cylinder is complete, the indicator valve is closed and the transducer is removed. This procedure will be repeated in all cylinders. While measurement is being carried out at the engine side, the results are being sent and recorded automatically in the computer. This is what happens when the measurement for each cylinder starts. As soon as the calibration box completes each measurement, the results automatically appear on screen. This diagram, which looks like a mountain, is called the PT diagram. Using this, we can measure each cylinder's compression pressure, or p comp, and maximum pressure, or p max. P-comp is the highest pressure generated by the piston's movement when it compresses the air inside the cylinder, while P-max is the maximum pressure inside the cylinder generated by fuel combustion. If we use the manual indicator tool, this is the procedure on how to get the PT diagram. The other diagram, which looks like a banana, is called the PV diagram, or pressure volume diagram, which basically shows the variation of the pressure within the cylinder during a complete cycle. Using the manual indicator, the PV diagram can be obtained by hooking the string to the engine's indicator drive, which is driven by the camshaft. However, not all engines have this kind of setup. Measuring the area of the PV diagram will eventually lead 
to finding the indicated pressure in the cylinder, which is one of the factors needed to compute for the indicated power. In the old days, we use a planimeter to measure the area of the PV diagram. But now, as you can see, the PMI computer already gives the complete results for each measurement. In any case, the formula for indicated power is the product of the indicated pressure, the length of the piston stroke, the area of the cylinder bore, and the number of power strokes per second. So for those who are curious as to how much power this engine put out during this measurement, I'll give you a quick calculation. Let's just use the mean values to solve this really quick. As mentioned, this is the formula. Now, this engine has a stroke of 2.4 meters, a bore of 0.6 meters, running at 81 revolutions per minute. Let's use the average indicated pressure of 12.3 bar. To make things easy, let's fix the units first so it will be easier to cancel when we solve the equation. First, let's multiply 12.3 bar by 100 to convert it to kilonewtons per square meter. Next, let's find the area of the bore. Now, since this engine is a two-stroke, that means there's one power stroke for each revolution of the crankshaft. So let's divide 81 revolutions per minute by 60 to get the number of power strokes per second. Okay, so the units are pretty much aligned and the rounded up result is 1,127 kilonewton meters per second or simply 1,127 kilowatts for each cylinder. Now, since this engine has six cylinders, Multiply 1,127 by 6, and we get 6,762 kilowatts, or 9,068 horsepower. There are other ways of calculating the engine's power, but for now, I hope you enjoyed seeing at least one of the methods which we use on board ships. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next one.